class presentations are next Tuesday. Sorry, I. Um, so some people are telling me they didn't receive the email. I send it from the Blackboard. And so it should have gone to everybody who is registered. Because it came from Blackboard, I don't like sending emails from Blackboard, but um, I don't know why I did. It may have been in your spam folder. Um, so look in your spam folder. Blackboard does this really weird um, piece on top, and you may have saw it was from Blackboard and just deleted it. So a couple of people said they didn't get it. It went to everybody in the class. It goes to your Saints email. Um, and so maybe check that, check your deleted folder. Again, I sent it Sunday night. Uh, or you can humbly send me an email and say, yeah, I probably deleted it. I'm sorry. I want to do my class presentation on Tuesday at whatever time we pick in about a half hour. All right, a mole. Just real quick, I made a half hour video. If you watched it, great. If you have not, um, do watch it. Um, I go through what a mole is. And a mole is 6.02. 2 times 10 to the 23. That's what a mole is. Uh, it came, this guy, Amadeo Avogadro, we're going to be using this number. This is why we need scientific notation. Uh, this is how many atoms or molecules are in a mole. And I go through this page. So we're going to do this page in under a minute. Uh, that is what one mole is. Do not abbreviate the word molecules or you'll confuse it with a mole. This is like a chemist dozen. It is a dozen. Uh, it's a lot more than a dozen. So the spoonful of water has this many molecules of water. The difference between a molecule and an atom. Anybody want to explain? Nope. Uh, an atom is just I'm trying to think of it. Molecule is more than one atom. It's made up of multiple atoms. Multiple elements. Yes. Yes. Um, and multiple atoms. So aluminum and gold are atoms. So the elements on the periodic table, we would talk about them as atoms. This is this is just a fine tuning thing. And compounds are typically molecules. Uh, Damon's answer was actually perfect because oxygen as O2 is technically a molecule. Um, when we get into naming next week. Um, yeah, all right, so this is called Avogadro's number. That's what this is, Avogadro's constant or Avogadro's number. You will see me eventually just symbolize it like that rather than writing it out um, as we get through the notes today. It is the mass of the element or the compound. Uh, so if we looked at aluminum on the periodic table, we're going to go with a four sig sig rule today, 26.98. That's what this number means. That average atomic mass on your periodic table. So for germanium, 72.61. So for aluminum, it is 26.98 grams is one mole. So if you had 26.98 grams of aluminum, you would have 6.022 times 10 to 23 atoms of aluminum. Um, so we're going to be doing conversions. Um, yeah, I think there's a bonus in that video. So you can even email me there and get a bonus. Um, all right. So let's go through the math. Uh, so if you had one mole of gold, well, one mole of gold, what is the mass? We find gold. Gold is Rm, Au. So 197 grams. We're doing four sig figs, so that's where I got that. It's 197.0 grams. That number is from the periodic table. That's me trying to write notes to you all. All right, I don't like this chair, so we're gonna move. Um, so having one atom is a very different question. One atom. Uh, we are going to do unit conversions. We're going to change atoms to moles. So one mole. And this will be Avogadro's number, 6.022 times 10 to the 23. Now, many of you have had chemistry before, 
And so you would have learned about this number. And we're using four sig figs. You need to use four sig figs. Now, um, for Raven and many, many more of you, with your calculator, if this number is in the denominator, you have to put it in parentheses because you have to divide by both parts of the number, specifically when it's in the denominator. So you might want to get in the habit of putting it in parentheses. Some of you have the fancy calculators. It's actually programmed in your calculator, so you just have a button you push. Um, anyway, and then gold, one mole of gold is 197.0 grams. And that's it. We would punch it in. I don't know why my answer should have one more sig fig. Does anybody punch it in? They can give me, uh, this should have four sig figs. So um, I, I'm double dipping with notes, as Spencer said, uh, from my Chem 104 class. And we did the three sig fig rule there. Um, a, a comment, you could technically combine this and say 197.0 grams over this many atoms. I am always going to break it to moles because we're going to start deviating and adding other steps. A mole is the central unit of a chemist. And from moles, we can go anywhere in chemistry. Um, it's like a dream come true. We can go to grams using the periodic table. We can go to atoms or molecules. Uh, we can go, there are mole to mole ratios that we're going to start using down here. We can go to volume using molarity. Uh, we can go to pressure using gas laws. And so we go all over the place. They may punch this in to get me a fourth sig fig. Uh, yeah, you? it's um, one at the end. Oh, okay. Thank you. So yeah. 3.271 times 10 to the, that's a negative 22. If you are dividing by Avogadro's number, this number is outrageously amazing. Um, you will have a negative exponent more than likely. Uh, so your exponent's going to be really important. All right, silver is Ag, argentium. Uh, and so we're going to start with our 43.2, and that's symbol for micrograms. For most of you, I recommend you write MCG. If you're going into health sciences, including you, Damon, everybody writes it now as MCG because too many patients died because uh, people couldn't read handwriting. The other way most scientists do is they write it with the mu sign. So if you're really good at writing the mu, you can do that. And let's write down, we're going to silver atoms. So AG atoms. It doesn't matter if you write atoms AG or AG atoms, right? So we have micrograms. The periodic table is in grams. So we have to get rid of the micro. So micrograms to grams. So using that chart, one microgram is 10 to negative 6 grams. So that's how the chart works. Um, we're at grams. Now we can use the periodic table. So with your periodic table, silver is that number, 107.9 to one mole. Now back to the question earlier. It's all in the units. And that's why we're doing that practice with units, conversions. Um, and I throw some hard ones at you because then when we see these units of moles and atoms and molecules uh, and molarity, uh, you, you just trust to go with the units. By the way, uh, you're going to see me abbreviate mole, M-O-L. I don't know why. It's just how chemists do it. We drop the E off. So you can write the E there. Um, yeah, and you can show the number 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. And we punch it in three sig figs because I started with three. You can draw, we're going to get Valentine's Day and Sherp and New Year and all sorts of holidays this term. So you can draw your Valentine's so you get ready. Uh, three sig figs, large exponent because we're multiplying by, by Avogadro's number. All right. So for the next one, we have a chemical compound. So when we do the gram to mole step, 
we have to add up all these pieces. So I want to walk through it with this one and then give you a chance to try these um, and I'll go through them. That I don't recommend showing what I'm showing here. So you kind of listen. You have 27 carbons. You have 46 hydrogens and you have one oxygen. You can just do this step in your calculator. But what you're doing is you're taking the number of carbons times 12.01. I'm getting that 12.01 from the periodic table. For oxygen, it's 16.00. For hydrogen, 1.008. Just use four sig figs, round your periodic table. Um, that, that one that I keep showing, right. And this is going to give you a number that is how many grams are in one mole. That's going to be for your conversion. So go ahead and try it. Start with your molecules. See if you can get some micrograms. Just try something or at least try adding it up and then do the hemoglobin one. This is a beautiful molecule. It's in your blood. It's what holds the oxygen. Um, yeah, so try those. I'm going to pause recording or you can take a five minute break. Um, Hi. And and then we have another page of these that we're going to walk through um, and I'll see if it worked out for next week. So back to the question I ended with. This is how you find that number for cholesterol. Does somebody get a number for what it comes out when you add up the numbers on the periodic table? find my calculator and do it maybe yeah it's 386.8 386.8 .8. 0.8 somebody else got that i got 386.7 oh thank you actually um that was perfect so our periodic tables since i don't have control of what periodic table you're using um there are some of them round slightly different. So again, that last place value, it's why we're going for that last digit might be different. That's not going to matter. As long as you give me four, it's going to work out. So I'm looking. So Mindy, your question, um, you both had 386 point some number. So we're in the same ballpark. What that means is when you're doing like the homework, your answer, that last digit, so 20.1, some people might get 20.2. Some people might get 20.1, uh, as long as you're in the ballpark. Now, if you're getting 25.3, something's off. Um, all right, so 3.14159. Um, times 10 to the 16. And write out the full word. Uh, if you don't, you're going to get confused at some point. All right, Avogadro's number goes in the denominator because moles and they always get a whole number. Moles are always one um, or another whole number, which we'll see. Uh, this again, put it in parentheses when it's in the denominator. And this is not an exact number. I talk about that in the video. This has four sig figs. We're going to use it with four sig figs. They cannot actually ever figure out exactly what it is. Um, there's some stuff on Google that have different theories about why they can't. And that's um, when you get out past the eight sig figs, it starts varying. All right. Um, and then we're going to use this number. So one mole is 386.8 grams. So the good news is the study set for Thursday, it pretty much just keeps repeating itself. Um, so you're just doing these calculations. And then we want to go to micrograms. So I do usually throw in a metric. So grams to micrograms. And you can write it this way, um, but a lot of people like to do it that way. Micro gets the one, 10 to the negative six. And we should get my answer. Three sig figs uh, should have four sig figs. So did anybody get it with four sig figs? Maybe? I got 20.17. 20.17? Yeah. That's good. 
And kind of back to Mindy, what you had said, if you got 20.16, we're in the same ballpark. 20.19, we're all in the same ballpark. Um, all right. Again, this is, I took this straight from my Chem 104. Um, I found my creative juices work different when I'm at, at my mom's home than when I'm in, in Gresham. All right, for the next one, here's my starting point. So 1.234. Uh, e is time, you can write it like that, e to the 21st or times 10 to the 21st. That's a personal preference. I don't care. I usually actually write it with the e, and you're going to see me start eventually reverting to that. Um, so this one actually has an extra step. So if you tried it and you didn't get my answer, it's because there's an extra step. And that is because the question wants us to solve for centigrams of hemoglobin. But it's starting us with just the hydrogen. The first thing we do is go to moles. That's kind of the whole mantra of this lesson is when you don't know what to do, when you're in doubt in chemistry, go to moles. Because for moles, you can go anywhere. Um, grams, mass is with the periodic table. Atoms or molecules, Avogadro's number. So our first step is we're going to divide by Avogadro's number. And I am labeling this time better than the previous ones because there's an extra step. I'm not just switching atoms to centigrams. I'm also going to change hydrogen to hemoglobin. And because I know where we're going over the next month, um, having this in a consistent pattern makes as we add the steps that much smoother. Um, so now we're going to do a mole to mole ratio. So I'm only changing one unit at a time. Here, I kept hydrogen and I changed atoms to moles. And then here, I'm keeping moles, but I'm going to go from moles of hydrogen. And then on top, I will have moles of hemoglobin. So you can just say hemo. This step is going to come from the formula, from the subscripts. Um, I had to make a choice of the order I was doing everything in. And um, we're going to be talking about naming next week. So chemical formula naming. Um, these subscripts are telling you how many, and this might have been the question you're asking, Lisa. These subscripts, like here, that's telling us we have 27 carbons. This is telling us we have 46 hydrogens. So hemoglobin's huge. It's a protein. Uh, so there's 2,952 carbons. 4,664 hydrogens, et cetera. You get a, uh, a really large number when we do the mass. But for right now, for every one hemoglobin, there are 4,664 hydrogens. That number is the subscript. If I'd asked about carbon, um, we would have said 2,952. All right, so my next step is for every one mole, of the hemoglobin I have, now I have to add up the whole mass. I know it's like 64,000, so make it a number. And then my last step will be grams to centigrams. One centigram is 10 to the negative two. So you may have a number for hemoglobin or no. I'll have a number. Um, just because I don't know, what what do we add to get that number? So you I got lost. In there. Oh, you just add all of those. Okay. Okay. Right. I'm assuming you understood that. Yes, you add all those numbers with your periodic table. Um, so the number I got was 9,272. I'm pretty sure it's higher than that. It is. Hold on. Try this I'm again. pretty sure it's 64,000. Like 3,575, 221.632. That That's doesn't sound right. 
Yeah, I did this one. This is kind of an evil question. Oh, I got it. 65,000. So this is really good um, to see if you've got how to do it. So back to some of the questions. So 65,322.9. Did anybody else get that number? I know it's I know it's around 64,000, so I know my number's good. You're all going to try it again? Are you doing this just by adding the subscripts on the bottom? So I take 2,000. 952, and then I take my handy dandy periodic table. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I got By 12.01. And then I add 4,664 times the number for the hydrogen, 1.008. And then I add 832. Damon, did you get it? I got 65,066. Maybe. But my printer wasn't working, so I'm reading off of my screen, and I might have punched in one or two numbers wrong. I can't I'm quite see it. See I'm looking to see. Oh, I'm missing a selenium. One second. No, that's sulfur. Just that's kidding. S missing a sulfur. That's S8. There's, yeah, and there's no selenium in our. Uh, I'm trying to see if I got. All right, I got sixty-five thousand three hundred twenty-two point eight. Great, I'm right. Um, so, questions on where I got that number from as you're all trying to punch it in. That was, I, I put that question on there on purpose because it allows you to see if you understand how to get this number. That, that, and the idea of Avogadro's number are really the two big points here. Um, it is. It is, again, taking the subscript times that number on the periodic table and then adding the next one times its number and the next one times its number. You are not going to see a question like this on a test. It would be a bonus question because, um, yeah, it might be a worksheet question. You keep working on that. Or you can just say, hey, I'm going to add up this one. which is a much easier one. So the, uh, what's in our green tea? Oh. Yeah, so again, I'm taking the 15 times the 12.01 is the number from the periodic table, plus 14 times my number from for hydrogen. So 1.008, and then plus the six oxygen, so six times 16. Four, use everything of four sig figs. So this number should be 2290. If you want to go with three sig figs, you can. If some people like, I'm sorry, four sig figs. Um, or you can go, if you like, going all the way out to there. So 290.3. I mean, keep going. So 5.35. And again, a lot of people get frustrated or like, oh, where are you at? I don't know. Uh, just take a deep breath and say, okay, I'm going to get what I can now. I'm going to listen. I'm going to write some stuff down. Please realize this gets videotaped. It does get uploaded. Um, it, my mom's Wi-Fi is slower than mine, so it, it's also how Zoom works. It takes almost an hour for it to get to me from Zoom, um, and then almost an hour to upload it on YouTube. I don't know why. Um, and I can't do anything until my office hours are over, so, um, but go back and watch it. Listen, try and do it again by yourself. See if you can get those numbers. And then when you come to class on Thursday, ask the question in a very constructive way and say, um, or very specific, um, and if you can come early. But but don't come and say, um, I usually give this talk on the first day. I'm totally lost. I don't know what's going on. Oh, my God. Well, it's, it's like the worst date ever for me because people are just dumping um, from other parts of their life into this. So come in with a very specific, very constructive, tell me what you understand. Say, okay, I understand this flow. I'm getting stuck right here. I'm not getting your, I'm not getting the same number. 
Um, if you don't get my answer, it's usually adding up from the periodic table. So go back and try it again. Um, all right, this is going to be again where we're making a double switch. So hydrogen atoms to milligrams of the compound. I'm just going to call it epi for right now. So atoms of hydrogen to one mole of hydrogen. Shortcut. Rather than writing this whole number out every time, absolutely can do that. You can just write capital NA. You just have to remember that's a number that you have to put in your peer, into your calculator. Uh, on this one, I have 14 moles of hydrogen to one mole of the compound. So epi, blah, blah, blah. You can write the compound out, actually. This one's easy to write out. C14H, sorry, C15H14O6. And then for every one mole of that compound, I have... 290.262 grams. Did somebody else get that grams? Milligrams tends to negative three grams. Um, so it's a comment. Actually, I had several students who were in my class last night who actually have been with me. They said they don't worry about getting every little detail during class because they realize it's in the video. They just kind of try to follow along as best as they can. Um, and then we should get my answer will only have three sig figs because I started with only three sig figs. Um, questions? Yes. Are we supposed to have these worksheets completed prior to the lecture? So this is not a worksheet. This is a gift for me every week of me giving you the notes that we're going to walk through during class. Um, again, everybody has different skills. Uh, it is assumed that the study set you were supposed to have done so that you have the idea of how to do the factor label, and now we're adding another dimension. <clears throat> so this is so you can follow along with me as I'm doing the notes. <clears throat> this is not worth any credit. Okay, this I guess I should have rephrased that. So these questions in the lecture um, worksheet, um, we're doing them as we follow along, not prior to the lecture. Right. Okay, I was but just I, confused because you kept saying, did anybody get that? Did you guys get this? And I was like, well, when would we have gotten it? Because we're doing it now. Ten minute break. We took a 10 minute break and I assumed having done this for 26 years that usually some people take a break and some people stay and try and work through some of the problems. And so I made an assumption that somebody had added up these numbers so that I didn't have to have you all watch me punch it in my calculator. But again, some people are like, I just need to take a couple minute break because I need a glass of water because I'm choking here. Um, and so I was just seeing if somebody had punched this number in their calculator. I'm not expecting that every single one of you did. Um, I'm hopeful that one or two people can say, yeah, I got that number. So that I'm not putting a wrong number there. And then I get people telling me, I don't know, what you did. Okay. Right. Thank you. So with that said, this next page, it's a whole page of them. There's five of them. I'm going to stop recording for like five minutes, six minutes. Um, I know you can't do all of them six minutes. There's some of you who might be able to, because some of you did this last term. And so, um, so try them. Some of you, you might be able to get through one, and that's awesome. If you can get number one done, and then I'm going to walk through them. So, or <clears throat> you can also take the approach that you're like, you know what? I get the idea of the factor label. I want to practice adding up those numbers from the periodic table. So you could also just go through each one of these and see if you can at least get that number and add up <clears throat> I have to go get a drink of water. So I'm going to stop recording um, or pop. Uh, let's go ahead and walk through these. And again, I know, I don't know, did somebody finish them all? It would be somebody that had 151 last term. That was an advantage of having 151 that, um, but you guys are all going to be fine. This, the moles is where the factory label starts rocking and it, it really shines. Um, back to the question Lisa asked me right before I had to, go get a drink of water. Um, 
I do not assume that you've done anything in these notes before class, except um, I just send an email and I don't know why sometimes it doesn't go to everybody um, and sometimes it goes to spam. Um, I know a lot of teachers are frustrated with this. Uh, there is a pre there there was there is a pre lecture video on there that went over uh, this in in a little bit of detail uh, and talks about the importance of moles. Um, and in all honesty, about half the people watch it before class, and about half the people watch it after. And so, uh, just make sure you do go on there. Um, also, to make sure you know that the these notes that I do record and I post it up there. So there's a separate one for the study set. And all right, let's find our page. So a billion silver atoms. Um, also realize, and this is just from feedback from previous students, when you're doing your study set, you can go back and, um, you know, watching my son who's taking another chemistry class. And as he's doing a study set, he will He'll go back into the lecture um, you guys have an advantage because it's being recorded. Rather than looking at his notes, which you can do, he'll actually go back in and listen to that part for the teacher again. Be like, oh, I want to see how they did that problem. Um, right. All right. And so 1 billion is 10 to the ninth. So you can just write it as 10 to the ninth. And it is silver atoms. Or you can just write atoms and write down where you're going. And this is the railroad tracks. Um, yeah. All right, so Adams is Avogadro's number. You can write it as that capital N-A, or you can write the number out. Again, when you divide, use parentheses. I have the answers there, because also, even if you only did one in that time, it's punching it in and getting my answer. You have to get it in the correct place value also. So if you're not, please make sure you stay after and say, hey, this one question, um, can we go through it? So don't tell me I don't get any of them. Give me a specific question, please. Um, all right, so moles, atoms on the bottom. Again, Avogadro's number is going to go with atoms or molecules. Uh, we don't need a mole to mole ratio because I'm not pulling out. I mean, it's only one type of atom anyway. So a mole of silver is the a periodic table again. The grams is this number. Silver is 107.9. And then pico is 10 to negative 12. I recommend cutting out or making that, pay, that picture for the metric, or you can find a whole bunch online, and having it there and being consistent, having it somewhere organized like with your periodic table Put the periodic table on one side and that on the other side and you should get my number all right 123 milligrams of caffeine and we're just going to molecules so i'm not going to have a mole to mole step because i'm not pulling out one certain type of element so i can just write milligrams and molecules and I have to get rid of the milli. You have to be in grams for uh, the periodic table. So a comment my students have made in the past is by the end of this term, metric is their best friend. They have no fear of metric. Um, it's, yeah, however you do it. And again, if if you're struggling metric, come and say that. Say, hey, can we do a few of these metric, metric conversions? My recommendation is you use that chart, put the one with the prefix, and then that exponent goes with the base unit, which here is going to be grams. All right. Um, this is also, yeah. All right. Milligrams. Uh, caffeine. I got 194.16-ish. Did somebody else get that? number so i got the one sorry i got the 194 but the the last two i got 22 not 16. all right i know why you got 22. we'll put it as 22. Yeah. it's not gonna make a big difference it's because when i punched in nitrogen i forgot the 0.01 so your yours is right um and back to what major said so if you had 194 
point two because you're doing the four sig fig rolls. That's great. Because both majors and mine, if we went to four sig figs, would have rounded to 194.2. And I apologize, my camera for some reason today is going in and out of focus. Avogadro's number, again, you can write it like that, but please put a unit with it. I would tell you on this problem, the most missed piece. So on your study set, what I went over at the beginning of class, I'm just looking to see if you did it. On your worksheet, that's where I might get a little nitpicky. The worksheet is so I can give you some feedback and you can absolutely have me look it over before you submit it. Um, is forgetting to put a unit. This number, Avogadro's number is a long number. It has a unit. It will either be atoms or molecules. It, it's something that you can count. Um, we'll actually see it with photons uh, eventually when we get to quantum theory. So photons are particles. So it has to be a particle. It could be M&Ms. That would be a lot of M&Ms. Uh, and so you should get this number. And again, my numbers, depending how I rounded this, you might get 3.81 um, times 10 to the 20th. The exponent is the key. If your exponent is different, um, something's up. Questions? So that first page is more introducing how to do it. And now as we're going through it, you start seeing oh, it's all the same. And then I throw this. So this is me being mischievous um, because our brains are all wired different. I look at this number and I don't care how many zeros there are. I just put a new random number. Um, so usually I do this and I can see hands. And I'm, I ask how many people had to count the number of zeros. And half of you, it turns out, have to count the number of zeros and get the correct number of zeros. And half of us, we're like, it's just a bunch of zeros between after a decimal point. It's not going to matter for this problem. Um, and it fascinates me. I don't know why. We have to get to be able to use the periodic table. I'm going to have to get to milliliters so I can get to picograms. So a highlighter or a colored pen so you can underline or circle all the numbers. I know I wanted to start with this because it had only one unit. This is kind of combining what we did for today's study set with this new piece of information. Uh, 0 0.946 times 10 to the 63 because that's what my head knows. Uh, if you want 0 0.946, that's fine. We're going to end up rounding to two sig figs. I want to go to milliliters to be able to use this step. So 10 to minus 3 liters is 1 milliliter. If you keep doing it consistently, how you go with metric, how you go between US and you, you start knowing them and you just know what to do. So it just takes practice. All right. This conversion is there. Uh, that is not density. That is uh, how much, what is the serotonin, melatonin uh, is circulating in the gnome's blood. Uh, picograms, so one picogram, 10 to negative 12 grams. And now I'm finally at grams. So uh, 232. So make it that number, the 232 ish grams to one mole and then one mole is Avogadro's number maybe uh, I got 232.3 okay great you can round it you know it's really funny I, I always do it as four six figs and the class always wants me to do six so um, I seem to never be able to win on whatever I go with uh, but we're gonna round to two sig figs because of the concentration. That's actually a concentration of how much melatonin. So melatonin is often heralded as our sleep hormone or sleep neurotransmitter, which, which is partially true. There's actually a whole bunch involved in sleep. Um, melatonin is so much more than that. But if you look at computer screens, um, your phone and stuff, after 10 o'clock at night, so this is why this is um, not good. It actually interferes with your sleep ability. Um, and so, 
yeah, turning off your cell phone at 10 o'clock at night is a really good habit, um, which I have when I'm in Oregon. Here, I don't get that luxury right now. All right, so two sig figs because of that number. Right, 1.75 grams. This one I need to label more carefully because I'm going to break out just the oxygen. When I write oxygen, I always put that little X in it because I'm trying to communicate so you guys can kind of follow. If I don't put that X there, then people think it's a zero and it confuses them more than they may already have been confused. But we want to go to moles. Kind of keep that in mind while you try this. So this comes out around 213. You can go 213.0 grams to one mole. Because we're doing, we want to label everything with two units because we're pulling out one type of atom, one type of element from the whole thing. Um, so on the previous three questions on this page, I just showed my unit atoms and moles, moles to grams. Uh, but here I want to label it more completely. So when I do that mole to mole step, Uh, to pull out the oxygen, I know that the aluminum nitrate goes on the bottom. It gets the one. The compound gets the one. How many oxygens are in this compound? Nine. So that's how I got the 213. When you have a parenthesis, and I talk about this in that video, that three, it's, it's like a regular parenthesis rule. We're multiplying. So everything inside the parenthesis triples. So there are three nitrogens and there are nine oxygens. So nine moles of oxygen. And then Avogadro's number will go on top to one mole. So a quick comment, that nine only shows up in the mole to mole step. Whenever you're going to Avogadro's number, it is always one mole. Whenever you're using the periodic table, it is one mole. That is why, so you, Something's always going to have that one, right? All right, and you should get, we had three sig figs. I'm pretty certain my answers are all good on this page. All right, one more. And sorry, I'm just looking to make sure your study set. No, it doesn't. No worksheet. So. Uh, chromiums, yeah, a lot of people take chromium for various reasons. 43.21 milligram. Oh, by the way, melatonin, back to melatonin, side note, melatonin is the most powerful antioxidant in your body. So that's why sleep's so important, because melatonin's job is not to make you sleep, well, it's to make you sleep so it can clean up all the mess from the day. And that's why when you look in the mirror in the morning, you always look younger. Now, I've said this classes and everybody looks at me and say, no, I don't. I look awful in the morning. Actually, you do look much be more beautiful. You always look beautiful. But um, that's really what melatonin is doing. It also regulates your circadian rhythms um, and stress interferes with it. And so stress is completely like what we think of stuff. And so it's like, oh, it's all right. Everything will be fine. All right. We are going to pull out just the hydrogen. So I'm going to. Just say, I mean, call this is, I'm just going to say Pico. No, that's not going to work. Is that what I have? Yeah. Pickle. You can call it the pickle. Step up there. One milligram is 10 to negative three grams. Um, and then this compound, 418.306 grams to one mole of, if you want, you can write the compound out, C6H14NO2,3. So what I often find is I had a, a lovely student who did really well in the class last term. And she's like, do I have to keep writing this whole compound out? You can write like I did. I just wrote a word here. When you do the metric conversion, you can leave it out. Um, but often having it there makes it more visible. 
So I have one mole of this whole compound. And really, it takes like 15 seconds to write the compound out. Is that? Do it as like a meditation. Do everything with love in your heart. Kind of like you're making like lentil stew, stew for the uh, like Dalai Lama and Pope. And so you're doing it with all the love in your heart, writing the compound out. And now we're pulling out just the hydrogen. So I have not 14 hydrogens. I have 14 times three, which is 42 moles of hydrogen. Oh, I'm sorry. That's not 14. That's a four. All right. So it's not 42. It is 12. Um, way past my bedtime. Um, yeah. And then we're going to. Oh, this is an interesting one. Is that where I started? Yeah. So. All right. There is another way we could have done this one. Mole. My happy gnome is running in the way. One mole of hydrogen is 1.008 grams. And I'm just going to put an arrow that my last step would be 10 to the minus 6 grams to 1 microgram. We didn't use Avogadro's number in this one. So my question is, why did we not use Avogadro's number in this one? And if you see why we did not, then you, you're you getting this. But we use the Avogadro's number if the question is saying atoms or molecules. But we're dealing with a mass and we're ending with a mass. We didn't start with atoms or molecules like we did up here, number one. And the question didn't ask for molecules like it did on the next three or atoms. Um, so there is another way to do this one, but this is one of the things that's really nice. Um, when you start getting used to doing these in this factory label, uh, it can really rock to get to the answer. All right. So two things. Um, so back to the question Lisa had asked. So there are more notes, and that is what we're doing Thursday. I do not expect that you know what molarity is. Uh, that is not our lab three, so please erase that. That's my bad. Um, and empirical formulas. So there's three more pages of notes, and that's what we'll be doing Thursday. But the first thing we'll be doing Thursday is going through the study set. So again, your study set is due at six to get the full five points. Um, I will go through it, and then we'll add the next dimension. Um, and then there's a worksheet also due on Thursday. The worksheet, again, is due by midnight, and I will be here the hour before class, five to six, and also eight till nine. Now, with that, the other thing, and I'll mention this on Thursday, next Tuesday, so a week from today, uh, our class presentations. So um, you want to be hopefully looking into your element. There is a page posted under syllabus um, that talks about it. So you're writing like three to five pages about your element, and you're going to be presenting a PowerPoint. So actually, Damon or Spencer, do either of you have your PowerPoint like handy? I do actually. Oh, I'm going to stop sharing. I asked um, one of them if they could show. They did this last term. So he was just going to show you real 